What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Thoughts of the Pugilist podcast. I'm your host, Fahd Bayezid, and today's, or this week's pugilist is one of the most dangerous super lightweights in the world. She will be fighting for the WBO, WBA, and IBO super lightweight championship of the world, November 20th, only on the zone. I'm with the one and only Jessica the Cobra Camara. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, like, you for having me. You here. like my intro? Yes, yes, I love it. How do you feel? <laughs> I'm feeling great. How are you feeling? I'm I'm a little bit nervous. I'm I'm Don't in, be the, nervous. in the presence Don't of be greatness. Nervous. <laughs> Stay relaxed. <laughs> um, so let's get right into it. What how'd you how'd you start all this? How'd you start boxing? Um, well it all started well basically the whole journey started when I was seventeen years old. I lost uh, my godmother, who was more of like a mother figure to me. I lost her to, to cancer. And um, through that, I got just really angry and I had to cope through, through those struggles. And um, I was lucky enough to be introduced to a boxing gym. And when I stepped into that boxing gym, that was just, it was my medicine. It was my way to, you know, just let go of all the emotion I was feeling inside of me, all the anger, all the sadness, everything. And I found purpose through my pain in the boxing gym. And that's where it started. And I started my um, amateur. So I basically started training when, in 2007. Right. So it's been what, 14 years. A few years, yeah. Yeah. And um, from what I understand, you come from a pretty conservative family. Um, were they not supportive of you boxing? No, my parents, uh, they're really old school. They were, you know, they, they came from Portugal with uh, my two older brothers. Old school European family. So they just, you know, had, being the only girl, they, they said, you know, I wasn't allowed to play sports. They just figured, you know, I was going to get an office job, cook get married, <laughs> cook and clean. And yeah. yeah, basically that. So, yeah, it was it was hard, and especially just like the struggles that they faced, um, you know, coming to Canada and being immigrants and, you know, having to work their way up and, and raise a family. Um, and me being the girl and being the youngest, I think my mom took a lot of her stress on me. And I was I'm lucky. the youngest of, of, uh, of five siblings. So, so you understand. I get yeah, you. yeah. So I was lucky enough to have my godmother to, you know, she helped. My, my parents raised, you know, raised me, especially when they were, when they just moved to Canada, they had me. So, you know, that was all fresh. Um, but I feel like everything, you know, everything that happened in the past and all that those struggles, it just made me who I am today. So I'm, right. I'm made, grateful for that. Made you a fighter. Exactly. So how did you end up meeting uh, Coach Ian? Um, basically, I was... I was born and raised in, in Ontario, and that's where I started my, my amateur career. And when I decided to turn pro, I decided to, to move over to, to Montreal because, you know, that's the, that's the fight city. Right. So, that's um, my line. Give me that line back. <laughs> <laughs> so, I basically, I was looking around to see what, what gyms I could see. I wanted to, you know, kind of go to different gyms to see where I, I best fit. So, I contacted uh, Shaquille Finn. Because I knew he was living in Montreal. The juggernaut. He spoke, yes, exactly. He, he spoke English, so I wanted to go to a gym that was English speaking. So when I contacted Shaq, I, said, I asked him if he knew of any gyms I could, I could train out of. I was moving to Montreal, and he had said that him and his coach were just opening up a gym. So, right. yeah, Donnybrook. So, at Donnybrook, yeah. So it was basically when I had moved to Montreal, it was that same weekday, they opened Donnybrook. So... I went to Donnybrook, met up with Shaq. Ian was there. Ian did some pads with me, and we just clicked. So basically, from there, it was I just stayed with Ian. I didn't really didn't go to around. any other gym. Yeah. Wow, it was, it was yeah. meant to be. Yeah, Ian. We just had a really good relationship. Our chemistry was just. It clicked. Yeah. So um, that was. And you turned professional with Ian. Yeah, basically, we started training like like I went to the gym like right before Christmas. So basically, after all the holidays, we started training in January and. Right in March, he got me. He got me a fight and I had my pro debut. Mm. And you, your pro debut was in Montreal. Yeah, it was okay. on the Gripovani Michelle card at the casino. Amazing. Mm -hmm. um, so you live with another boxer mm -hmm. uh, who happens to be your wife. Yes. Who happens to be who? Well, she was my former opponent. Your former <laughs> opponent. Uh, tell us a little bit about how you know your 
a girl that how, you fight ends up how that happened her. um it's actually my second my second pro fight um we so she she was from mexico our fight was in uh hamilton mm-hmm. ontario and we had a face off and there was a chemistry there but you know i go to my corner and i was just like oh she's she's cute she's fun <laughs> she's cute but i mean she I, she actually went to her corner and was saying the same thing but it's business you know so we right. went in there we did our thing we fought i came out with the victory and um yeah we basically got in touch after that and we hit it off she was in mexico but we um we took a trip to cancun actually for my 30th birthday we had a week vacation there and we did the long distance thing for like about a year and then eventually she came down here and <clears throat> i proposed to her and now we're married <laughs> I, I would never believe that story if i didn't if i didn't know that it was you know it was yeah, it's pretty crazy but yeah i imagine it might be um there might be a lot of maybe tension at home if uh you guys are both fighting or if you're both cutting weight i mean both of you have very intense lifestyles yeah um, yeah Actually, my last fight when I fought Heather Hardy, <clears throat> she was she when fought. When you beat Heather Hardy. When I beat Heather Hardy, <laughs> <laughs> she was fighting the the, the next day. Mm. So we were we were in camp together. Um, we never really have to cut weight. Like actually, she had to cut weight like when she first came down. Cause she fought from like 147, then she jumped down to 120. But when she made that jump, it was like she just kept that weight off. But she was never really 147, was she? She fought at 147. She was she was big. She but was big. Anyway, yeah. she's tiny, you know? Yeah, yeah. But she we we had her set it from the get go, like, you know, you should be fighting at, at 120. So we took the fight with Lindsay Garbit. She fought Lindsay Garbit. She cut the weight. And she basically just kind of stayed like between like 125 to 120. So she's never really had to work too hard to keep that weight off. Mm-hmm. And I myself was the same. I, I started my professional career at 147. I worked my way down to 140 and I kind of stay between there, like 140. But yeah, basically we were in camp throughout that, and we were in camp together. Right. And um, there's different pros and cons, right? So we get to, we can run together. We, we were eating healthy, we're eating, you know, healthy foods. But there's mood swings in camp, you know? You're, oh, yeah, so, sometimes course. it's hard, you know? And, you know, sometimes we're both down and we're, you know, it's like a cat fight at home and we, but yeah, but we understand that we understand it. So it doesn't really last very long. Right. We motivate each other, you know, when. Do you compete with each other? Are you, are you do you still have an ego because she's your <laughs> former opponent to a certain extent? When, when we happen to get in the ring and spar, yeah, it's. I it heard some get stories. pretty crazy. It can get I pretty heard. crazy, but we try to kind of stay away from that. <laughs> right. Only in the ring. Yes, exactly. Exactly. So um, you're playing two roles, right? You're the fighter. And you're the wife. Usually, I mean, well, usually. A lot of the times, it's like um, when you're someone's wife, you're just kind of worried about, you know, them fighting, and you know, you constantly worried because you know your 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 person is gonna go and fight mm-hmm. for their life. Mm-hmm. How how do you play both roles? Like you're a fighter, and you have to be that caring person at the same time. Well, the thing is, is like I understand the lifestyle. So somebody that doesn't understand it and doesn't live it is gonna see it a different way right so i understand it so that it's actually a good thing so i actually if i don't have a fight i'm usually helping i'm helping her in coaching for the fight and i'll corner her for the fight so Mm. she feels she feels confident when i'm there and i mean not worried not worried i know she you know she She can handle her own yeah exactly are you ever afraid you'll be too emotional because well you love her and she's fighting and you have to tell her what to do without being emotional no no i'm like i can leave my emotions aside and you know and and make sure the business is is done (laughs) when it needs to be done does does ian take over does ian Ian, coach her as well yeah ian does coach her as well Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. awesome um now you're fighting your next fight you're fighting um kaylee riaz Mm mm-hmm who happens to be your friend. Um, <laughs> is it uncomfortable to fight your friend? No, I mean, ideally, you know, I'd rather not fight my friend, but I mean, she, she is a champion at 140 and this tournament was happening and why would I not want that opportunity, right? Of course. And I mean, she's- Everything you've worked for. Yeah, she's a great person inside of the ring. She's a champion in, in, inside and outside of the ring. 
And I feel like her style and my style is gonna mesh well, and it's we're gonna make. We're gonna I think go. it's gonna go well for you because she's a little bit taller than you. And you, have, <laughs> you have that. Light, you have that style. I like, I like fighting taller, taller people. Yeah. So, yeah, I feel like it's gonna be a great fight, and we're gonna give the fans what they want to see. <laughs> of course, I'm I'm gonna be there for that fight, no matter what. Um, now, her manager happens to be her her boyfriend, uh, who's also your manager. Mm-hmm. Is there any type of like conflict of interest there? Mm. I mean, ideally, it's like you know, obviously, it's that's his girl, right? So he's gonna have her best interest. Right. But I'm also a part of the team, so but it's all love. Like I don't really feel any any tension. At the end of the day, we're gonna go in and we're gonna fight, right? So all of that just has to, you know, stay stay out the ring, and we're gonna go in there and do what we do, and the best fighter is gonna win. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. I mean, you must not be that uncomfortable fighting your friend if you've already boxed your wife. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Good practice. <laughs> um, now, when you beat Heather Hardy, uh, she's a former world champion, obviously. Um, what do you think that did for your career? It definitely opened up a lot of doors. A lot of people didn't know my name. You know, I was known here in Canada, but when I, when I beat Heather Hardy, Everyone worldwide knew my name. Right. And it opened up doors and it actually got me this, this opportunity right now. You know, if I didn't have that fight, I wouldn't have this opportunity right now to, to fight in this, um, in this tournament. What, what did that do for your confidence? Do you, are you a little bit more convinced that, yes, I, I belong at the top with, with yeah. these girls? Yeah. Or, or did you always have that with you? Um, I was always, I was always, I always knew I had that. But I was always waiting for that moment to, you know, to show the world what I'm capable of. And I showed it in that fight. You know, I showed that, you know, I'm able to stay composed. And I learned throughout my professional career how to, you know, stay relaxed and, and perform at that level. You know, it, did, it didn't come. You know, I've learned over the, my whole professional career after 10 fights. Of course. To, you know, to perform in that way. Mm. Mm -hmm. You... Um you, you're sponsored by Rival, and they made you the sickest gloves <laughs> for your last fight. Yeah, they were dope. They were Do dope. you have any idea what they're going to look like for your next one? Um, well, first I got to pick out my colors and stuff for, for my uniform, and then once I have that, I'll, I'll design my gloves. But yeah, so I know they're going to put together something special. How does that work? Do you just pick the colors, and then they, they work on the design, or, or do you, tell, you give them like a hint of what I usually you want? let them work with it, and then they'll show me you know, what, they, what they have, and most of the time I love it. Mm. And yeah. Do they give? Is it like a Loma situation where they, they show you like three prototypes and then you pick one of the one of the three? No. Well, usually they show me one. And if I want to critique anything, I just let them know. But I tell them my colors. I tell them you know what I what I want type mm. thing, and they'll work with it. Amazing. Now, do you match your nails with the color of the gloves? No. No. no I just they're basically done right now. <laughs> yeah, they're done. I don't really usually, usually do my nails like in camp. If I don't. Yeah. But for a fight, I'll get I'll get them done. But I usually just go and I just look at the colors and I'm like, yeah, this color seems cool. <laughs> and I'll pick a color. But I'm, I'm, I'm a very, like, usually I'll go like black or white, but sometimes I'll feel fancy and go for like something like this. <laughs> I'm feeling fancy. Yeah. It, it, um, I think the Cobra's tongue is orange in, uh, yeah. in Cobra Kai, so. There you it, go. There you're, you go. you're rocking this <laughs> Um Now when I watch you, when I watch you fight, um, you really fight like a bully. Like you're constantly moving forward, you're moving your head, your hands are up, and there's not, a, there's not a second, whether it's the first round or the last round, there's not a second where you're not very well placed, you know, knees bent, chin low, hands up. Um, so you, you, it, feels, it feels like you're fighting a bully, but outside of the ring, you're, you're a very nice girl, you're down to earth. At what point do you turn on that, that you know, the Cobra, when does the Cobra come out? I would say when the, when the bell rings. When the bell when rings, the bell you don't, you don't kind of bring that person out as, as the camp progresses? Well, yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I'm always, I'm always training. I'm always in the gym. It's my lifestyle. But once, once I have a, a fight, my mentality is completely different. You know, my sparring sessions are completely different because it's like you got to switch, switch. You got to turn that switch off, right? So, yeah, I guess you can say throughout the camp, you know, I do make adjustments and you know i do train for the for the fight and i'm in camp mode but i mean 
I'm always a nice person, you know, <laughs> outside of the ring. So that doesn't change. The Portuguese culture. <laughs> well, the Portuguese culture, yeah, that's, that's the warrior in me, you know, that's the Portuguese culture. That comes out in the ring. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. it's, I, I thought the, the manners was the Portuguese culture. No, we're, we're crazy individuals. Oh, yeah? You're <laughs> yeah. a rough rider. What was that? A rough rider. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so, in my opinion, you're obviously you're a very good boxer. But in my opinion, your, your mental strength is really what, what makes you who you are. Um, what, do you have any like mental strength building exercises or do you have any, any rituals before fights just to, you know, no. just to boost your confidence? No, like that was, that was taught throughout all these years, throughout growing up, even before I started boxing. Mm. I was taught mental toughness and it was just going through obstacles and all the challenges I had to face in life. That's what, me, that's what made me mentally strong. Of course. You know, I don't think you can teach that. I think you have to You develop. don't think you can teach that? No. Oh, okay. Develop that. Yeah. You see, it's different. Mm -hmm. yeah. I feel like everyone has their stories and everyone, you know, can, can be strong and, you know, overcome challenges in life. But I feel like in order to have that mental toughness, you got to go through those challenges. Mm. I, um, do you have any, um, I, I don't want to say superstitions because that's the word I used with my, uh, with my last guest. She told me that she work, she wears, um, the same sports bra in every fight since she first started fighting because um, she thinks it gives her good luck. Do you have any, any similar you no. know, paranoid ritual or anything no. like that? No, I don't. Not a single one? Uh-uh. You don't put the right glove on first? The left one. That's put, Ian's thing, though. Okay. Ian said, like, you know, back when he... Ian, the Irish Ian, lucky lefty. <laughs> Is that what, what it comes from? No, it was actually when he trained with Freddie Roach. Mm. Yeah, I guess you always said left hand first. Left hand first. Yeah, so it's so always left hand first. Just because Ian says so. <laughs> I mean, does it change your, um, you know? Okay, say you, you were sparring regular day. Ian's lacing your gloves up, and uh, something happens. He gets distra distracted. He puts the right glove on first. How do you feel then? No, no. He might, he might blame if we have a bad sparring session. He might blame it on, he might blame it on that. But yeah, no, I just don't. Yeah, I just go with the flow. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. I'm trying to get something out of this. But the, you're, no, you're, I got nothing. I got no, nothing. Like a rock. Yes. Um, now, you, you've, you've traveled recently to, um, to the UK for your press conference. Mm -hmm. um, what, what's the biggest culture shock? I mean, because you haven't, you've traveled everywhere, right? Is there a trip in particular that, that you remember, a trip for boxing that you remember that's like, wow, this is, this is different here. Boxing here is, is different. Uh, for boxing, I would probably have to say Mexico. Um, yeah, they're just a different breed there. It's like, they don't even mold their mouth guards like with boiling water. Like they gave me a mouth guard. I was like, hey, do you have like- A real boiling one? Boiling <laughs> water where I can, they're like, boiling water like this is Mexico just put it in your mouth I'm like hmm, okay <laughs> yeah it's just different there you like everyone spars with everyone they'll spar with eight ounce gloves they just pretty much use whatever they have <laughs> right right yeah. that's actually exactly what uh Tio was telling me last time uh -huh. last last episode he was telling me that they're just you know they train there's no AC in the gym in Mexico yeah and that's the least uh -huh. of their worries uh-huh they, yeah. yeah they just pretty much just use what they have yeah, man, I admire that. Yeah. Now, do you th bringing you back to the mental toughness? Does that does that build more character than if you you know had a nice gym like this one to to train out of all the right equipment and and everything? I'm sorry. Can you repeat your question? If, does it are you mentally tougher if you're training out of a, a gym where you're just using what you got? No, no. I mean, I don't think you know the difference between you know, being in a fancy gym and the difference between being in a gym like in Mexico where they don't have proper equipment, I don't think that is going to differentiate the fighter that you actually are. I just feel like Are you just saying that because you have a fancy gym? <laughs> 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 I'm messing with you. Yeah, no, I don't think that makes any difference, to okay. be honest. Yeah. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. um, now, you, you fought a lot. What do you want people to remember you as after you're, you're done boxing? What do you want? What do you want the name, you know, uh, Camara to, to be recognized as? Um, well, I want people to recognize that 
you know, I worked hard and never gave up. I never had anything given to me. You know, I was a fighter that always had to take risks. And I took losses and I came back and I bettered myself through those losses. And I feel like that's something important. That's something I want people to recognize me and remember me for. And you were always the underdog. Yeah. Always. Yeah. Pretty much every fight you were, you were the underdog. Yeah, I mean, I had some fights here, you know, where, when I was fought on a group of on Michelle's cards and I had some Mexicans come down. And then, you know, that was the beginning. But, I mean, to, to make it and to make my name now in the sport, get you I anywhere. always had to be the underdog yeah. and take those risks. Messi. You could be 30 and 0 or 50 and 0 if you want against nobodies and then, you know, it won't, it won't really bring you anywhere. Yeah, I had to take those risks and fight big names and now I'm here and now I'm on the biggest stage. You're, oh man, <laughs> you're there. Yes, you're there. yes. Um, what, what's something that you want to accomplish after boxing? Um, I really like to work with, with youth and, and coach youth. I would love to have my, my own gym and run a youth program. Um, work with youth and women in particularly. Um, Little hoodlums? Yeah, I like to just, <laughs> to just um, you know, kids that are going through stuff, you know, kids that are going through issues at home, kids that are, you know, rehabilitating through, through getting out of, you know, jail and rehabilitating back into society. You know, I would like to teach them what boxing can do and just bring them up in that sense. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think... To understand what you're trying to say, you have to understand what boxing does to you. Because I, I completely yeah, understand. Like, yeah, um, I feel like I, I work with, with children now and I feel when they come in the gym and they put the gloves on, it just, it just changes them. And I, yeah, love, I love that feeling of being a part of, of that journey with them. Yeah, I, I started boxing when I was eight years old and it made me a completely different Yeah, person. exactly. Yeah. So just to be a part of, you know, a child's journey and showing them that way I feel like that's just it's amazing and that's what I want to do in the future I do it now but I feel like I mean I dedicate so much of my time to training so I'm only I only have so much to give to the youth but right. you know after I achieve what I want to achieve in my professional career I want to dedicate a lot more time to the youth wow that's that's beautiful mm -hmm. thank you all right we're gonna play a game I'm gonna name um four or five fighters Okay, and you're going to describe them with one word or one sentence. Oh, okay. Are you ready? Try this, okay. Okay. All right, <laughs> yeah, right now the, the men are 2-0 oh on, this, on this podcast because Rebecca was terrible at this game. I'm not good with this. Game. No? I'm not good with this game, okay. but we'll, we'll try, we'll try. <laughs> All right, are you ready? Yeah. Katie Taylor. Idol. Idol. Amanda Serrano. Animal. Fair <laughs> enough. Layla Ali. Legend. Okay. Chrissy Martin. Are you looking for like fight fight terms? Where that describes them? Are they, no. Am I doing good? Okay. No, no, no. You can, okay, you can say okay. whatever you want. You, you can. Okay. You can even call someone out if you All want. All right. No. Go Clarissa ahead, go Shields. Ahead. Clarissa Did I Shields. Say that? No. Quote. 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 Oh, okay. I see. I see what you did there. The W in the middle. Manny Montreal. He's, he's family, <laughs> he's, he's family, man. he's the man, yeah, he's, he's, he's boxing in Montreal, like, he, he knows it all. Of course. Yeah. Yeah, he's Manny Montreal, yeah, boxing exactly. Montreal. Yeah, exactly, his name says it all. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you, appreciate it. I appreciate it. your time. Um, good luck in your, in your fight, I wish you all the best. Thank you. Follow my girl, Cobra Camara on Instagram, or I won't knock you out, she'll knock you out. <laughs> Big shout out to Monstrosity and Kings and Queens Boxing. Peace out.